So in this quick video, we're going to be taking a look at the use of two-dimensional splines for the creation of 3D objects using the surface tools or the surface modifier. The sur I call it the surface tools method. So I'm going to start off by creating a couple of 2D shapes here, beginning with a circle. We're going to also create an n-gon. And the purpose of me creating these different shapes is that we're going to start exploring what I would consider the rules to follow or the rules of thumb when using the surface modifier method. Uh, I'm going to create a rectangle. We'll also create a line. And I'm creating these with explicit shapes in mind, specifically as it relates to the number of vertices that are in the two-dimensional shapes. That's a closed spline there. And here is a concave shape one. Now the rule with the surface modifier is that the surface modifier will only create a surface if it's a four, a three or four sided region or a three or four sided spline. So if I select all of these splines and I go to object properties and turn on vertex ticks, I can actually begin to count the number of sides. There's one, two, three, four. That's a four sided region or a four-sided spline. And if I go to the modifier drop-down menu and choose surface and add it, you see that it actually creates um, topology. If I drag it onto the rectangle, obviously we expect that to be a four-sided region. Now if I drag it onto this n-gon, notice it is not a four-sided region, so the um, surface is not generated because it has one, two, three, four, five, six sides on there. If I drag the surface modifier onto this triangle, it also generates topology because it is a three-sided region. Remember the rule is three and four sides only. So uh, that one is not. Now this one will be a little bit more interesting. It is a four-sided region, but notice that when it creates the topology, it does something a little unusual with the topology there. Even though it's concave, you need to be a little bit aware of that. So you may want to um, take that into consideration when you're generating your uh, surfaces. So remember, three and four sided regions are the, uh, the rule for creating topology that spans across a spline cage. Now we're going to go ahead and I'm just going to delete these and we're going to take, I'm going to delete those and we're going to take a look at how we actually create what I call the spline cage. This is the next major component in uh, using the surface modifier. So I'm going to select this uh, object. I'm going to also leave the end gone, but I'm gonna begin working with this one here. I'm just gonna copy it over. And we're gonna talk about basically the first rule, uh, well, well, the next rule I should say is um, how to actually create a cage using multiple splines. I'm doing a couple of different methods here. Uh, oops, let me undo that and redo this again. Turn off my snap tool this time. And I'm going to make copies of this uh, circle. Okay, so now I have four explicit circles here. And I can select each circle. And I know it's four explicit objects because each object has an individual bounding box. Now, the rule is that we want to have uh, the splines be all one object. And I'm going to convert this to an editable spline and show you a method to create duplicates of the spline so that it is all one object. So I'll select the spline at the subobject level, and then I'll scale it, or excuse me, I'll move it up in the Z hold, while holding down the shift key, and you can see that it's one object. It has one bounding box, but it has four subsplines that are part of that. So now when I add a, a modifier called cross section, or excuse me, surface, you can see that it generates a surface on each one of those regions because it is a valid region. Now, I want to connect these using a modifier called cross section. Cross section gives me the ability to generate splines automatically uh, between contiguous subsplines. So um, there's, uh, you see each one, notice how they're all lined up. Notice the first vertex in the back there is the white vertex. Um, I can also uh, do this, let's see, I'm gonna go ahead and just do this manually if I wanted to. But, you know, that takes a lot of time, and that's the purpose of the cross-section modifier, is that it does it automatically. Okay, now that takes a little bit of time, but it's essentially the same thing as using the cross-section modifier. Okay, I'm going to hide that other one. All right, so now what I want to do is, uh, once we add the surface modifier to that, you can see that now we have a solid contiguous surface 
Uh, each one of those uh, sides is a four-sided region, and not only that, the connections between the uh, using the um, uh, connections between the individual circular subsplines also generates a four-sided region right in there. So, again, three or four-sided regions, contiguous splines, all one object. Those are basically the rules. So I'm going to go ahead and delete those. I'm now going to show you one other method for creating the cross sections automatically to, again, speed up the process a little bit. So I'm just going to duplicate those uh, spline, the circular splines there, and let's delete the first three. So spline subobject mode and delete. Okay, now over on the modify command panel, um, if we go into uh, uh, spline mode, uh, there's the cross section modifier, as I just showed you. It's also embedded directly within the modify the editable spline um, object type. So if I go into spline, and you'll notice down here it says uh, connect the uh, individual copies. It's essentially the same thing as adding the cross-section modifier. So you can do it after the fact, which you may need to do depending on how you create the splines, or you can do it as you go, um, and it will automatically generate the cross-sections for you with the, uh, with the uh, sub-splines all completely aligned. So um, again, uh, easy way to do that using the uh, connect copy checkbox. Okay, now I want to go back and kind of discuss the importance of the n-gon, which um, I'm going to delete that, delete those two. I'm going to do uh, unhide all, and here's the n-gon, and um, this is actually the spline that I use the most. Now you may wonder why, because it didn't generate a surface when I created it, and that's fine. But um, the reason I like this one is because I can dial in the exact number of sides that I need so that I can uh, instantly create a lot of topology should I need it. The other thing I like is that um, I can also make it circular. So we can have either a very uh, complex or a very efficient model, meaning we could have a circle with uh, three sides, which is a valid region in the world of surface tools. Um, or we could have you know any number of sides we want, if we want eight sides, which is fine. And um, I tend to use the n-gon quite a bit because of this feature. It allows me to get the number of vertices that I need directly within um, the subspline before I collapse it. Not only that, you remember, you remember with the circle, the circle had a four-sided region, and we could automatically generate a surface across that. With the n-gon, we can have a five-sided region, but still use it to construct a cage without having to inadvertently generate um, surfaces directly within the middle. So I'll do uh, I'll create duplicates here using our connect copy feature. And we get the same thing as we had before. The difference now is the top and bottom are no longer four-sided regions and we um, have an open end on either on either end of that. Whereas with the circle we had a closed top. Now let me kind of show you how to fix this and this is an important principle because we want to, uh, uh, this is a, a, a technique that we would have to probably use at some point anyway. So I'm going to turn on automatic endpoint welding, and I'm just going to cross um, the top there, turn on my snaps, make it a lot easier, vertex snaps. And I've just by creating, um, whoops, let's try that again. That was set to smooth. Let's drop back. Okay, now that's set back to linear. Let's try it one more time. Vertex. Yeah, see, all of these are set to Bezier. So we're going to temporarily make them all smooth, which is or um, linear, which is just fine. It, we can change them back later. And uh, go back to Create Line, and we'll create it. Now, just by creating one spline across the top, I've created uh, two valid regions. I've created a three-sided region, which you can see kind of on the upper left there, or upper right, and a four-sided region. So I've got... Um, I'll go ahead and grab these all, and uh, bottom one's still curved, but that's fine. We'll make it all smooth. Uh, we can, we would fix that shape a little bit later. But you can see here that we've created uh, two uh, legal, what I call legal regions, where we have a three and a four-sided region, and um, our shape is a little bit deformed. But that's fine. We can adjust that. This is actually one of the nice things about 
surface uh, spline cage modeling is that, or surface modeling is that we can deform the model just by deforming the subset of splines and the topology automatically updates. It's similar, you might want to say it's similar to NURBS, but um, obviously it's technically not a NURBS surface, but uh, it does indeed allow you to um, to uh, pick that up. Now, oops, let me see here. Oh, I've got to, sorry, swap these two. There it is. There's the problem. Drag that down. Okay. So generating uh, topology using the spline tools method, sometimes called surface tools or the surface modifier method or the spline cage method, uh, gives you a lot of flexibility in how you're generating your topology and gives you a lot of freedom in getting really nice organic surfaces. Uh, in the next video, we're going to take a look at how we actually model something from scratch using this method and the, how you can generate some really quick results.